Hi, my name is Madhav Sade. Uh, in this session, we will learn about PCF services, how services are managed, how they are bound to applications, and how CREDUB is used to enhance the security posture. At a very high level, there are two types of services, user-provided services and managed services. In case of user-provided service, the user is responsible for managing the life cycle of the service. In case of a managed service, the PCF platform is responsible for managing the life cycle of the service. For managed services, there is an important component called service broker. Service broker implements what is known as an open service broker interface. That interface is exposed over HTTP and it has certain standard functions such as catalog, which is used to describe the various service uh, service types and service plan that the service broker has. Provision to create a new service instance. Bind to bind the service instance with an application. Unbind to unbind the service instance from an application and delete to delete the service instance itself. Now when the service broker is created or registered with the PCF, it publishes the variety of service types and service plans it has with the PCF deployment. But the developer actually de doesn't directly interact with the service broker to create services or bind services. Instead, developer uses the cloud controller API exposed via CFCLI command line tool. So the developer uses CFCLI tool, which is basically talking to the REST endpoint of the cloud controller. And typically developer will issue the CF marketplace command to find out variety of services that the PCF deployment has and all their service plans. Once the decision is made to use a particular service plan, then the developer will issue create service command using CFCLI on the cloud controller. The cloud controller will issue provision command and in response the service broker will actually spin up the service instance. Now what service broker does to actually spin up the service instance is left to the implementation of the service broker. For example, in case of a database service, it can choose to create a new database installation or it can choose to use the existing database installation and only create a database schema for that particular service, uh, service instance request. Similarly, for RabbitMQ, it can choose to create a new RabbitMQ installation in a separate VM or use the existing RabbitMQ installation and only create a virtual host for that particular provision request. After the service is created, the developer would like to bind that service with an application. Now here is an application A and the developer is going to issue the bind command, the bind service command, giving the application name and the service instance name onto the cloud controller. The cloud controller will then issue the bind command on the service broker and the service broker then goes ahead and creates credentials for the application to connect with the service instance. The credentials are returned back to the cloud controller and then the cloud controller stores those credentials onto the local relational data store called CCDB or cloud controller database. These credentials are ingested by cloud controller into the application using environment variable called vcap underscore services. If you go to the apps manager after binding is done, go to the apps manager and expand the environment variables, you will find the vcap services JSON over there. For the application to make use of these environment variables, it, the application has to be restaged or restarted. Application can use either auto configuration or it can also use the JSON to uh, 
get the URL and the, and, and the username and password to create the connection with the service instance. Now the service instance is not app specific. It can be used to connect to multiple applications. For example, app B can be also connected to the same service instance to which app A is connected. Now when the bind command is issued for app B for that service instance, the cloud control will again issue the bind command on the service broker. Now the service broker may choose to create a new credentials for the app B or it may choose to use the existing credentials for the app B as well. Again that is left to the implementation of the service broker. Whatever it is the credentials are returned back to the cloud controller and the cloud controller will use the recap underscore services environment variables to ingest those credentials into the application. Now the problem in this approach is that the credentials can go to logs and it can leak from there. It can also be leaked from any of these components that have access to the credentials. Now from the security compliance point of view, the operator actually may choose to rotate the credentials. And when the credentials are rotated, the again app, the applications has to be uh, restarted or restaged. So basically the container has to be recreated. Now that is not very efficient from the operational point of view. PCF 2.0 solves this security problem by introducing a new component here called Cred Hub. When the bind command is issued, the credentials are created or reused uh, depending on the service broker implementation. But those credentials, instead of giving it back to the cloud controller directly, the service broker uh, stores those credentials into the Cred Hub and then the Cred Hub will give a reference entry to the Cred Hub record uh, to the cloud controller. And that Cred Hub reference entry is ingested into the application using the same VCAP services mechanism. Now here, the application doesn't really have the URL or the username and password to connect to the service instance. Instead, it has the reference entry into the Cred Hub. Even if the application somehow leaks that via the logs or some other mechanism, even if somebody gets access to that reference to the Cred Hub entry, they don't actually have mechanism to connect to the service instance because the application has to authenticate itself with the Cred Hub in order to get the the real credentials to connect to the service instance. So the application will authenticate with the cred hub, pass on that reference entry that, that it received earlier, and then get the uh, real username and password and URL for the service instance. This way, it significantly enhances the security posture. Cred hub uh, locks down those credentials and also the credentials can now be rotated and then the application doesn't have to be restarted in order to take effect of the rotated credentials because it doesn't really have the real value of the uh, of the URL and the username and password. Well, that concludes my session on PCF services. In this session, we learned how PCF provides a standardized and easy interface to manage external services, bind those services seamlessly with the applications, as well as enhance the security posture using the Cred Hub. Thank you.